Let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer, if you don't mind. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, and I pray that your spirit would move upon us. Father, you'd open our ears, open our hearts to give us the assurance to know that we are yours. Father, that you will use us throughout the week as we come here together today to, to receive something new from you. It's your son Jesus' name, I pray. I'm, I'm really excited about today. Y'all ready to study the scriptures together? Yeah. Now, we're speaking really to believers here. I assume most of the people who are in this room are believers, so I'm, one of the, our obligations and our, and our privileges is, is to help equip you, help equip you for service. And it's to have a better understanding of who you are in Christ. Do you want a better understanding of who you are? What I want us to leave here today, I want each and every one of you to be to walk out of this room today and saying, I am anointed by God. That's what I want. And, and some of you might say, well, gosh, I'm not sure if I can really say that. Because, you know, isn't that kind of for the special people? You know, the, maybe it's the, the preacher or the, the one who's speaking or, or maybe it's the worship leader. And, and sometimes it, it seems that if we're really honest with ourselves that, we don't really have as good an understanding as we need to have about you being anointed. There's a verse that's just been ringing with me all, all day, to, or all week, this whole week, and it's, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And we're going to end with that. We're going to end with that today. I just want, I want the build up because I want you to understand it's, it's a lack of our understanding sometime that causes us not to walk in the power of the Spirit in the way that the Spirit wants us to walk. See, the, the, the truth is um, a lot of us sometimes, because we have this lack of understanding, we, we actually start having this feeling that well, maybe I'm, I'm too unworthy or I'm too insignificant or I'm too... Um, inexperienced. And I guess it's good to have humble hearts and to look at ourselves with humility. But when it causes us to now think of ourselves in weakness rather than the strength of the power of the Holy Spirit, then we need to make a shift. And I want that shift to happen today at Journey Community Church. Yeah. That you are not too weak. It is in your weakness that God makes you strong. Right. And I want you to leave here today knowing that you are anointed with fresh oil. A lot of times it's, it's important for us to understand that we depend upon him completely for that strength. This is not something that comes up from just within us because of our ability, because of our intellect, because of our knowledge. It is something that is God-given. God gives it. And his Holy Spirit gives it to you. And a lot of times we talk about anointing just in the context of a worship service. But I'm going to tell you, It needs to be more than that. You need the anointing to face the everyday grind of life where ministry really, really happens. This is just equipping us. If you think this is the, your, whole, your whole church life, your whole Christian walk is coming to a service and experiencing um, the joy and the pleasure and the fellowship with our brothers and sisters, that is a good thing, but that's not even comes close to what God wants to do with you and through you all week long. Yeah. And to do that, we need to be anointed by Him to do it. Because it's hard. Any of y'all have a hard week? I got some messages from several people saying, man, this was just a tough week. You know what? You know why you made it? Because God's anointed you to make it through that week. And when people are ugly to you, when there's stress and there's strife and there's chaos, you bring the presence of God to that situation right there and right then. I want you to know you are anointed. I think it's important for us to understand who it is that we follow. Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. That's who we want to be like. That's who we want to look like. That's who God created you to be like, to be anointed. See, Jesus, as y'all, as we read here a couple of weeks ago, he read from um, Isaiah 61. He said, and he, in, in the book in Luke, when he went to the synagogue there in his hometown in Nazareth, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has, what? 
anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent me to bring liberty to the captives, to bring sight to the blind, to bring liberty to those who are oppressed. I'm going to tell you what, I'm glad we follow an anointed one who's been anointed to do those things because he wants to do those in you. And he wants to use you to do those things in others. If we'll just realize you really have an anointing on your life, whether you know it or not. I want you to walk out of here today with that on your lips. I'm anointed by the Holy Spirit. We know that um, the disciples spent time with Jesus. They watched him. They watched him walk in that anointing. And when Peter is preaching to a, 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 another Roman official named Cornelius, who God had, the Holy Spirit drew to the gospel and, and drew to salvation. Peter's talking to him and says, let's go to verse Acts 1038. And Peter's talking to him and says, you know of Jesus of Nazareth. He's talking to this person who probably never met him, but he's been hearing about him. He says, you know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God did what? Anointed him. How God anointed him with what? The Holy Spirit. So Peter's sitting here preaching to this Roman official who says, you've heard about Jesus and he's the one that the Holy Spirit anointed with power. And he went about doing good, right, and healing, doing the exact things that he said, that, that Jesus said the Spirit had anointed him to do and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. For God was where? God was with him. We serve a master. We serve a savior. We serve a God who anointed our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. And Jesus Christ wants to know that you are anointed to do those things as well. Uh, another thing that's important for us to understand is God anoints his house. So God anoints Jesus, who's the Messiah, the one, the anointed one, but God also anoints his house. The very first time that the word an really oil or there's a, a, a situation that describes what I would call an anointing is Jacob. And Jacob was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. So this is way back there. First time this is ever mentioned anywhere in the Bible. Anytime that happens, there's something important that God's trying to teach us. And he was running. He was running because Esau wanted to kill him because he had gotten, he had stolen the blessing that Esau thought he should get. And he was sent to go to a, a family's, a relative's house a long way away, getting away from Esau. And Jacob laid there and went to sleep with his head beside the stone. And while he was sleeping, he had this dream. And in this dream, there were angels that were ascending and descending on a ladder from earth to heaven and from heaven back to earth. And God appeared to Jacob in a dream and gave him the promise of what he was going to do through Jacob's life. And Jacob woke up and he goes, the Lord was in this place and I didn't even know it. And he took that rock that he had slept on and he turned it upside and he made a pillar on it and he got oil and he poured oil over this rock. The church is a rock. He called the place Bethel, the house of God. God anoints his house, dedicates it, sets it aside for holy purposes. Who are we? Aren't we the house of God? Aren't we the dwelling place in which the Holy Spirit dwells? God anoints his house. And if you're in the house, man, it's a good place to be. Amen. It's a good place to be. Because we are his dwelling place. God doesn't just anoint his house. He anoints his servants. God gave Moses some very clear instructions to make a certain kind of anointing oil. To take regular oil and to mix it with certain spices. And the first person he was supposed to anoint was the high priest Aaron. He pours oil all over him. Running down his beard coming down to his clothes, 
all over him. He had, didn't just anoint Aaron, he anointed his sons, the other priests. God anoints his priests. Who are we in the kingdom of God? We are to be a kingdom of priests. God takes and told Moses to take this same oil and to pour it all over the tabernacle, to pour it all over the, the Ark of the Covenant, to take this anointing oil and spread it and smear it all over the utensils. All those things were consecrated for service for God. And that's what God wants to do with you. He wants to smear you with his oil, to consecrate you for holy service, to be set apart for him, to be used by him. The question is, do we believe it or not? Do we see ourselves as his servants? Do we see ourselves as his instruments? I'm going to tell you, folks, we are. If we'll just take the anointing. Jesus then, um, we know that... Um, I let the baby go on turn. I love babies. Amen. Something about that being like the kingdom of heaven, isn't it? That's right. Babies, so don't you ever worry about a baby causing a stir in here, okay? It's a joy. Right. Babies are life. Amen. Amen. Bring them on. Come on, let's have a bunch of babies. <laughs> but, it's, but it's important for us to grow up, right, from being babies, right, to grow up in Christ. Kings were anointed. When it came time when the children of Israel didn't want just to have the judges over them, they wanted a king, and God went ahead and gave them what they wanted. And he had Samuel go to anoint a man from one of the lesser tribes, somebody small, even though he was tall, and he anointed Saul to be king. And he became a new man. And God gave him a new heart. And when Saul later disobeyed the very clear instructions of what God gave him, God chose to anoint another king, and his name was David. Samuel didn't know who it was yet. He was just told to go to Jesse's house. He says, can you bring all your sons? Because I've been instructed. I've been instructed here to come anoint the next king. So Jesse brings his sons in there, and the first son, boy, he looked good and handsome, and Samuel said, that must be the one. And God said, no, he's not the one. I said, well, who's next? And he, goes, he went down through each and every son. And God told Samuel, that's not the one. And Samuel says, any, any more sons? He says, oh, yeah, there's one, the smallest, the youngest. He's out there taking care of the sheep. They didn't even think enough of them to bring them back out of the pastures when the man of God was in the house. You want to talk about feeling small and insignificant. You don't even get invited when the man of God comes to the house. But Samuel said, go call him. We're not, we're not going to start until he gets here. And as soon as David walks in the room, the young, the young, David, the youngest son, the one of the least importance. And God says, this is the one. And Samuel takes of his, his horn of oil and pours it over David in front of all of his brothers. He said, he's to be the anointed one. Now, he didn't take the kingship for a long time until he was 30 years old, but he was anointed and every time he faced trials and every time he faced troubles, he said, I'm anointed. And every time his enemies came after him, he knew deep in his heart that he had been anointed by the holy, by the, the prophet that God had sent. He knew who he was. I'm going to tell you what allowed him to make it through those years and years of trials and tribulations. Even though he was small and even though he was insignificant, there was one thing he could not deny. God had anointed him. And he felt the oil pour over his head. And if you can just imagine oil just running down your scalp, running down your face, and running down your clothes. He wasn't ever thinking, was I, was I really anointed? He knew. Because David was anointed. 
God anoints the anointed one. God anoints his house. God anoints his priests. God anoints his servants. He anoints his utensils. He anoints his kings. And that's exactly who we're to be. We're to be his house and we're to be his kingdom of priests. Paul talked about that and reminded the Corinthians of that. If you'll turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 through 22. And Paul is talking to this church in Corinth who didn't grow up with these Jewish roots. He said, now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has what? Has anointed us in God. He's also sealed us and he's given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Who had God anointed in Christ to seal them, to preserve them, to give them a down payment through the power of the Holy Spirit of what God was going to do with them and through them for all eternity? It was the anointing. John knew the exact same thing. Let's turn over to John. I'll tell you, the church, you have an anointing that God has placed on upon you, whether you know it or not, if you're a believer. And John is speaking to this group that's probably up around Ephesus. He says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. In verse 27, but the anointing which you've received from Him abides where? It abides in you. This anointing abides in you, and you don't need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. And it's true and it's not a lie. And just as he's taught you and will abide in you. Why is that important? Because the Holy Spirit has something to teach you. Something for you to hear. Who here wants to be anointed to hear the Holy Spirit? teaching them. Nobody? Who here needs the Holy Spirit to teach you, to cause you to understand because that anointing abides in you so that you will know, so that you will hear that the Holy Spirit can guide you each and every day through the grind of life? I don't know about you, but I, I want that anointing. I want you to understand why this is important. God chose you. Just like He chose His Son and sent His Son to be sacrificed. He chose Aaron. He chose His priest. He chose His kings and He's chosen you. You are not here by a mistake or by an accident. God has chosen you. But the truth is, sometimes we don't feel so chosen because we let the devil beat us up. I want you to walk in the confidence knowing that you are chosen. You are chosen by Almighty God to be His kings and his priests who house in which the Holy Spirit dwells. And he sets you apart and he calls you and he consecrates you and he sets you aside to be his own special possession. Every week we call for the elders to come up here and pray. Y'all have seen that many, many times. And almost always the elders or one of the elders are going to have a little bitty bottle that has some oil in it. Y'all have seen that? You ever had anybody come dab some oil on you? Yeah, I'm almost embarrassed that we dab people with oil. I'm going to tell you, they didn't dab people with oil back then. They poured it all over their head. But I don't think Nelda would appreciate it if I poured a big flask of oil on her head. But, but don't worry, I've got some. <laughs> some of us, some of those who don't have much hair, it won't be a big deal. But if you came to church looking all pretty, it's going to mess you up. 
it's going to mess you up more than you ever imagined. <laughs> My wife asked, I said, I, I told her I should ask for a volunteer. She says, do not ask for a volunteer and pour this whole thing of oil on their head. <laughs> but somebody might want it. There may be somebody who's hungry and says, I've got to be anointed. I've got to know. I don't want a little dab of the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit poured over me, running across my scalp, down my face, all over my clothes. I want the Holy Spirit to be smeared on me more than I've ever experienced it before. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was not dabbed on the people was poured out. Poured out. In fulfillment of the prophecy from the book of Joel who said, in those days my spirit will be poured out on all flesh. My sons and my daughters, they will prophesy. My young men will... (laughs) dreams and my old men are going to see visions. I don't know about you, but that's what we need in this house. And that's what you need to make your walk every day through the grind of life. We need to know that we're anointed. And the Holy Spirit comes. There's no... Formula. I've heard people who said, who have talked about the formula that you've got to do this and then this happens and the Holy Spirit does this. I'm going to tell you in scriptures, there's all kinds of illustrations of how the Holy Spirit moved. At Pentecost, they were just together praying in one accord and the Spirit fell and poured out upon them. And then they, people saw what had happened and Peter goes and says, this is what you need. You need to repent and you need to believe in Jesus Christ and be baptized for the remission of your sins, and you shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you, there were people who got baptized with the Spirit before they ever got baptized with water. And they just heard. There were people who just heard the Word, and the Spirit was poured upon them because they came to God in faith, believing that Jesus was exactly who He said He was. He was the Son of God who was sacrificed for their sins and His blood purchased their salvation. Just like He purchases your salvation. This is is the God that we serve. There were some who received the Holy Spirit just because somebody else who had the Holy Spirit laid hands upon them. So there's no magic formula. What there is is the willingness to appeal to our God for a clean conscience to say, Jesus, I need you. I need you. I need you to do what I cannot do for myself. I need you. Jesus said the Heavenly Father gives the Spirit to them who ask for it. And he pours himself out into our empty hearts and fills us back up. And he'll fill you with his spirit too. We've got to come to him with our emptiness and say, God, I'm, I need you. Full containers don't... If, if I if I got my little vial here, this, this was given to me by a pastor friend of mine, and I take it everywhere I go. God has given me the opportunity to pray for people. And the tops only come out off my, in my pocket one time. <laughs> but if I tried to pour this, I'm not going to get much in there because my container here is pretty small. And if it was full, there's nothing else that comes in. I've got to present to him, you've got to present to him an empty vessel to say, use me. I need you to fill me up. I do not doubt your salvation between you and God. And I believe that if you have put your faith and trust in God, the Holy Spirit dwells 
in you and lives within you. I'll tell you, you couldn't ever even been there if the Holy Spirit didn't call you. You don't believe because of your intellect. You believe because the Holy Spirit has opened your heart to begin with. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit drew you and brought you. But the truth is, as we start walking through life and we go through the routine things of, of our experiences and we start, sometimes we, we just forget. Do you? I just forget I'm anointed. And maybe it was last year. I know, man, I felt the anointing a year ago, but I'm not the same place right now. Maybe it was a month ago. Maybe it was 10 years ago. If it has folks like the old chili commercial, that's too long. I love this psalm. I'm going to read here from Psalms 92. I'm really just going to read that one verse. Go ahead and put that up there. The Psalms 92 is a psalm entitled A Psalm for the Sabbath Day. Isn't that amazing? This was a psalm that David wrote for the Sabbath day. And the Sabbath day occurs how many times a week? At least once a week. The Jewish Sabbath would be on Saturday. This is our Christian Sabbath. And I'm going to tell you what. If David, who knew that he had been anointed and walked in that anointing, through every trial and tribulation, still said, when I come on the Sabbath, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Every Sabbath, we come here so that we can be anointed with fresh oil. Every week, every week, every week, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. We need to come with the expectation when we walk in these doors, we anoint these doors. Why? Because we want the anointing to be here. The anointing is in the house. And for you to crave and to say every week, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Are you brave enough to say it? Are you brave enough to want it? Because your life will never be the same. Quit walking with old oil from old dreams and things that you've done back in your past. You need to get some fresh oil today. Today. And next Sunday, you know what you need to get? Some fresh oil. And when you wake up next Sunday morning, I want you to think, I get to go to church on this Sabbath day and I'm going to go get some fresh oil because the Holy Spirit is ready to give it to you. I'm going to ask the elders to come up here to pray for people. I'm going to ask the prayer partners to come over here. If y'all stand. And we do this every week. We do it every week because we believe the elders pray and anoint people with oil because the book of James tells us to do that. We want to be faithful to his word. But I'm going to tell you, it's important for us to come with expectation. I'm going to give this whole bottle of oil to you, Wendell. And how much ever somebody wants to pour it on them, you go feel free to pour it. You may not want to get it on the carpet. Next time we'll put plastic down. But... You don't have to pour it all on them. Don't, don't think I'm, I'm not. But it's important for us. It's important for us to want to have fresh oil. Are there any among you, and I see somebody who's walking because I know he's about to be baptized. Is there anyone else here who knows they need to repent? They need to repent. They say, I, I, I've been walking in oil, old oil too long. Is there any among us who will do that? who'll come to our altars and pray? Are there any else among you who want to be baptized for the remission of your sins like Cassie's going to do right now? 
parents or anybody else who knows because the Holy Spirit is drawing you and calling you exactly what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings you under conviction to say, I need a change in my life. Is there anybody here who says, I want to be baptized? Anybody else? Okay. I want us to spend some time just praying. Dallas, as you play, and if you want the elders to pray for you for an illness or for a sickness, do that. If you want some of these anointed ladies to pray with you, do that. And if you believe you just need to get right with God and it's time to repent because the Holy Spirit's telling you you've got to get some things right, now today is the time to do it. Today is the day for you to get fresh oil.